I am in a Marimo notebook right now, and you're able to see me do things that you can't really do as easily in Jupyter. You can see that I've got a slider here, and when I slide this around, I'm assigning the value of that slider to a variable in Python, and you will see in this cell over here that it automatically updates as I slide things around. This is something that's really typical to Marimo, and his reactive updating is something that Marimo is really good at. That said, there are a few things you can't do in Marimo. Famously, one of them is you cannot redefine a variable. A variable can only be declared once, and another thing is that you're also not allowed to update a variable. In short, the reason for this is that if we want to be able to make these change reactively, we don't want to be in a situation where we have to guess what value of the variable is actually accurate. So in general, you define a variable once, and then we can give you a whole lot of features from there. And this is very unlike Jupyter, but kind of a funny thing there. Um, what you're going to look at here is a Jupyter notebook where I'm doing things that you can't do in Marimo, like updating a variable or, in fact, defining a variable and then defining it again without errors showing up. The reason why Jupyter lets you do this is because you can run these cells in any order that you like. And in Marimo, we actually try to figure out the order on your behalf. But the funny thing here is that Marimo does have this one feature where you're able to take a Jupyter notebook, maybe with contents like this, and you are able to turn that into a Marimo notebook. And at first glance, you might wonder, how we're able to do that in the first place. In order to do this, we pull off a few tricks, and that's going to be the main thing of this video and explain how we go about this. As you'll see, more things than you might think actually just export totally fine into Marimo, but there are a few things that won't export at all, and that's also something I'm going to explain in this video. Okay, so I've got this notebook over here, right? Untitled 13.ipynb, and what I'm just gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna open up a terminal here, and I'm gonna call the Marimo command line utility. And in particular, we're gonna have a look at this convert command over here, which allows us to convert a Jupyter notebook or markdown file or Python script into a Marimo notebook. I should be able to just give it that untitled 13.ipynb file. By default, it'll just uh, print it on the command line. And what I'm just gonna do in this case is I'm just gonna move it into a new file, untitled 13.py, and that is going to be the Marimo notebook that I'm going to show in the next tab. Okay, so just for comparison, right? This notebook starts with a is equal to three, then we're gonna add eight, and then we return a, which is equal to 11. In Marimo, we see something that looks similar, but is different. We still start with a is equal to three, but then we actually introduce a new variable, one with an underscore at the end, and the whole point here is that we're gonna show that indeed this is a new variable, and this way we're not making an in-place change, and as far as Marimo is concerned, we can still show that there is indeed a variable here that is equal to 11. Note that we are of course assuming that the IPython notebook file that we get, that that's in the correct order, but hopefully from here you can see the main trick that we apply. Whenever you are overriding variables, we just create a new one on your behalf. And this way we are still able to guarantee that A, we have a notebook that runs and B, that we have cell outputs that match what you have in Jupyter. Going back to the original notebook, after showing the value of A here, the next cell actually says A is equal to one. So we are redefining this uh, variable. We then say B is equal to two. And then we move on down below over here uh, to show that A is equal to one. And if I then go to the Marimo notebook, instead of a is equal to one here, we see a underscore two is equal to one. So we can still see what the original variable name was, but we also see that this is a new version of it. So again, we introduce a new variable, b is equal to two, that remains the same. And the output of this cell also remains the same because in Jupyter, we are referring to a value over here. And yes, we changed the name of the variable, but the value in the output here is exactly the same. So again, we are really just applying the same trick, but by assuming the order remains the same inside of Jupyter, we still have a notebook here that is consistent with what Marimo expects. As you can imagine, this is actually quite general, and this technique allows us to really cover a lot of ground as far as things that could happen in Jupyter, but still get that working inside of Marimo. But it doesn't mean that we can capture everything though. So let me show you a few edge cases that I was able to come up with. Uh, one thing is that you might want to use the pip install magic inside of Jupyter. This allows you to install Python packages in the same virtual environment. We also have this exclamation point that you can use, and this is typically a way to send commands to bash on your behalf. Another thing that you might also see inside of Jupyter is these fancy widgets, so IPy widgets in particular. You can install this plugin, and by having that, you should also be able to run some of these sliders over here, and that can be used for some uh, updates of variables too. 
And then finally, what we've got over here is a external plugin that is being loaded in again via a magic. In this case, I'm saying, look, let's just grab the auto reload magic and then let's uh, set auto reload to two over here. Uh, this is also something you would typically do when you're working on a package and then you want to have a notebook that uses that package. Uh, this way you don't have to restart the notebook all over the place. But uh, yeah, the, these are like very specific Jupyter features, you could say. And let's see how they get translated into Marimo. The first magic command, the percentage sign pip install scikit-learn one, we comment that out mainly with this extra bit over here to mention that it's actually automatically uh, supported just to show that off. If I were to do something like uh, import sk learn over here, then I actually get an update telling me that there are some packages that are being detected in the notebook that aren't installed yet. And this can be installed automatically on my behalf. In this case, it's going to install scikit-learn, but it's also going to install some other packages that are being mentioned here. So I'm just gonna run install on all of that. But uh, hopefully it's also clear that we can just get away by commenting uh, because this command inside of Remo, it can just be ignored because if the package is actually being imported, then we should just be able to deal with that uh, in a different way. Then we get to this uh, bash stuff, I guess you could say. And this is just something that simply won't run inside of Marimo. So this is just going to be a cell that's going to raise an error, simply because this is not supported. When you can't run a cell, Marimo is going to try to run all the other cells independently of it. So even though there's an error, uh, a lot of other code should still run just fine. Uh, I'm going to remove this for now, though. But one thing to remember is that we don't support this natively. There are utility packages. Uh, MoTerm and MoUtils have a few things that allow you to run stuff from the command line from inside of a notebook. But this is something uh, that will, in general, just uh, break. Next up, after installing everything, we can have a look at the widgets from Jupyter. And we actually get a special error message over here. We And as the message says, uh, this is just something that is not supported inside of Marimo. Marimo has its own way of dealing with widgets that's incompatible with the way that the more classic IPy widgets deal with it. In general, if you want to have widgets that work both in Jupyter as well as, I suppose, VS Code or Marimo or all the notebooks out there, uh, then the recommended path these days is to go with any widget instead. These are supported in all major projects these days. So uh, yeah, if you have a notebook that heavily relies on the IPy widgets library, then that is something that also is not going to be directly supported. In general, you should be able to convert this manually though, depending on the widgets that you use. So if you're dealing with an integer slider, that is something that Marimo also offers, of course. But the main thing to remember is that we cannot make this conversion automatically on your behalf. So that is something to just keep in mind. That's something we can't always translate. And then when we get all the way to the bottom, there's the final thing I could come up with that we don't support natively. And that is this uh, load X. This is a magic command, as it were. Jupyter has a bunch of these. And these are also just not supported uh, in Marimo in general. Now, in the case of auto reload, uh, that is something that Marimo supports natively. So in this particular case, we could make the argument that commenting this out is actually just going to be totally fine because as you see on the bottom over here, uh, if a module were to change, we can auto run that on your behalf. And that is basically the feature that this auto reload uh, gives you. But of course, there are also uh, other magic commands that we don't natively support. Another one that is a little bit popular is the one that allows you to time how long it takes to run a cell. But Marimo also has a way to deal with that. Uh, if you hover over a cell that already ran and then you look on the right hand side over here, you see a little indicator of how long it took to run the cell. And when you hover, you also see uh, when the cell ran. So. For a lot of these magic commands, uh, we will just comment them out, but it's good to know that there are native features in Marimo that can typically deal with them uh, if that's going to be a problem. But yeah, in short, the way that we go about converting Jupyter notebooks into Marimo notebooks, it involves a lot of variable renaming in the end. If there's a lot of variables that are being declared and then changed in place, then adding a suffix is the way to go. And we do the same thing when variables are being overwritten. But having said that, there are, of course, these moments when we won't be able to fix everything on your behalf. So yeah, uh, that's what we do when we do conversions from Jupyter to Marima.